Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Now today I've got another Distress Oxide colour combination video for you and we're going to be looking at Victorian Velvet. So we're getting towards the end of the alphabet. We've almost finished. By the end of 2023 I hope to have all these videos wrapped up for you so we can start 2024 with a brand new Distress Oxide series. So stay tuned to my channel for that and make sure you are subscribed to this playlist as well so you don't miss any of these colours. So we're going to be looking at Victorian Velvet, comparing it to other colours in the range using my free colour chart that you can download at home and fill in at your leisure. Um, I've also got a colour combination that's tonal for you using this and a colour combination with a pop of colour that you can use that's using three additional colours too. So lots to get on with so let's start blending. I'm going to be using a blended, clear blending mat, blending brushes and of course distress oxides. You can do these with inks but I just prefer oxides, that's my own preference. Um, but all the colour combinations will be relevant to distress inks as well. I get that question quite a lot. I'm going to just pop this into the centre of this strip purely because of my first color combination I want to put a color either side of it so just blending this in now Victorian Velvet is I want to say a funny one it's another one that sits within the purples a bit like seedless preserves it sits within the purples in the range so when you look at any of the range of color charts for example that's where it will be when the colors are listed in order as such it will be within the purples but for me it's kind of a dusky pink so let's just pick that up there we go so that's what it looks like when it's um, blended and as you can see in my opinion it's definitely a lot darker than the label shows obviously when you're printing colors it's very hard to get an exact match um, most of the distress ink and oxide labels are pretty spot on this one I think is a little bit different to how it looks when it's actually blended obviously they do dry a touch lighter but I don't think that's going to dry quite that light and then again the ink pad is obviously much much darker but more to the shade more pink in this so let's just take a look now at how this compares to other colors in the range like I say this color chart is free for you to download off my website we have got it's completely blank um, but you have got a template so you can fill it in with the squares all the names of the colors are there you fill it in with what you've already got and then uh, you can see what you where you've got gaps if you wish and such so I'm just going to bring these ones in so this is the purples the reds no need really the pinks there we go purples and pinks these are the ones that are going to be closest to Victorian Velvet so as you can see Victorian Velvet is here and like I say it sits within the purples maybe in like that you can see why perhaps but to me I think it should be a pink just just my personal opinion so as you can see obviously no purples that are anywhere near similar to Victorian Velvet when you come over here the pinks aren't they definitely sit better don't they although there's not really too much. We've got worn lipstick, which is close, quite close when you see it um, kind of blended like this, the darker color. But worn lipstick is still a little bit brighter, a little more pink. Um, yeah, and that's about it really. It would sit nicely with the abandoned coral as well. If I just put here, uh, worn lipstick, and Victorian Velvet together you can see how close they are um, yeah so see what you think let me know in the comments what do you think do you think they are close do you think that Victorian Velvet should be a pink or a purple it doesn't really matter if they're between the two does it so that's where it sits I think it kind of sits on its own but if you want to try out these color combinations with what you've got at home and you do have one lipstick instead definitely try that one so let's go with a tonal combination first of all this is where we go from dark through the middle and into light and I've actually chosen to go for a grey today because this is quite light and there wasn't really much that was paler than Victorian Velvet and staying within the same sort of colour so I've chosen to go for a warm um, grey instead with pumice stone so let's start with aged mahogany first of all I'm going to pop this on the end. I really love Aged Mahogany because it's a deep dark burgundy red. Now every colour that I'm showing you to, let me just check, almost every colour that I'm showing you today, um, I'm just think, are they all here? I'm just No, there's one. So one of the colours I'm showing you today doesn't have its own video just yet, depending on when you're watching this. 
um, but like I say by the end of the year 2023 I really hope to have all the colours uploaded filmed and uploaded for you so we've got everything wrapped up this year next year I have a really fun distress ink and oxide um, playlist for you new series that I am extremely excited about um, I've not seen anyone else do it before um, but it should be good fun and help you get even more out of your inks and oxides so I'm going to blend these two together aged mahogany and Victorian velvet and as you can see absolutely perfect beautiful beautiful blending I don't need to do much at all to these in fact although I still go over them because so, do you know when something's perfect you still work at it now you see this darkness here this is simply an awful lot of ink that's just an overload of ink on there because my aged mahogany ink pad is really juicy at the moment so it's I wouldn't say it's new but it's been recently re-inked I tend to re-ink rather than buy new which is why my labels all look so tatty um <laughs> but I just think it's the the uh, cheapest option for me is to re-ink my pads. Sometimes if I go a bit overboard, you get this, and this is just where it's drying. It's just taking longer to dry, so it soaks into the paper. That will dry nice and clear. We'll see that probably by the end of this video, that will be a lovely smooth frosty colour rather than the patchiness that we can see there. So I'm just going to clean this with a little bit of water and kitchen towel only because the next colour is the grey and that's much lighter I don't want to get any of that deep mahogany colour in there so pumice stone like I say is a grey it's a warm grey so it's going to work nicely with the warm tones of the previous two colours so I was going to go with a pale brown but I thought you know what actually pumice stone will work equally as well now because it's such a light colour just going to take me a moment to build this up and don't be scared of using your neutrals like your greys your pale browns um, even your whites or your blacks within your color combinations particularly um, at the ends so whether it be the lighter shade or the darkest shade definitely don't be scared of using them in those combinations because they really are fantastic neutrals that will literally go with any color let's just bring that down a little bit so with what's left on my uh, brush I'm going to blend some of the Victorian velvet up into the pumice stone here um, I will probably apply more ink in a moment but I start with what's on my brush and see whether that's enough and then if it's not then I apply a bit more color so just working in circles over that blend line so I only blended the pumice stone up to the line where I'd stopped blending the Victorian velvet I didn't try to start blending straight away so just working tiny circles there we go I think that has almost done it actually don't be tempted to do big swoops when you start doing big swoops that's where you suddenly get a line of colour now I've got some excess basically those who know me who follow my channel for a while know that I recently washed all my brushes in the washing machine it worked really well but I forgot that I had paper labels on them and the labels all came off in the wash and that means I've got tiny particles of paper in a lot of my brushes and these are coming off on the ink pads and on my swatches which is really frustrating so we can see there isn't that like doesn't that just work you just the gray just kind of picks up the pink tones of the Victorian velvet which is fabulous so like I say this will all dry itself uh, clear over time so don't worry about that too much We'll pop that aside we'll take another look at that one at the end but let's take a look at another combination using Victorian velvet um, this time we're going to introduce some completely different colors so we're going to bring in tattered rose weathered wood and stormy sky a little bit different bringing that pinky color into blues so let's start with the Victorian velvet on the end just pop that out outside there now the reason I use um, vellum or parchment when I'm holding my cardstock still some people like to use like a post-it note for example other brands are available um, but I use this because it has the slight waxiness 
to it the slight resistant almost material um, property to it so when I am popping it onto my cardstock if I've got ink down on there I'm not smudging it and it's not absorbing any of the ink as well if I was to use plain cardstock a, I can't see through it to get an overview of the entire swatch but also uh, that cardstock could potentially soak up some of the wet ink that's already on the swatch and affect it so um, I just find using vellum or parchment um, a better choice and it might just be all in my mind it might just be what I think works best it's not tried and tested I just do what I think's best that's why I use that it feels right for me so there's our Victorian velvet so quite a dark dusky pink then we're going to go into a pale the the palest pink I think it's kind of got a peachy tone to it as well so tattered rose now this one is um it is a new ink pad but because it's so pale it doesn't show up very quickly it takes a little while to build that really build that color up it's, it's still gorgeous gorgeous color and as i say it does have its own um video in fact i re-inked my ink pad especially for the new video when we did that which wasn't that long ago because it's a t we're working through alphabetically do you know what that's just blended on its own i haven't actually had to do anything there to blend those two together perfect so then we're going into weathered wood which is kind of a gray but a bl with a blue in it let's just give this a white because we do have the pinks on there and we're now working with the blue so just a dry cloth there so again weathered wood I almost consider a neutral because it's it's a blue but it's such a gray blue so touch of this this is just going to lead us nicely into the stormy sky so build this up in the same way as i just built up the tattered rose being such a pale color might need a little bit more work let's come back to tattered rose to come into the weathered wood so going down into the solid area of the color and then small circles to build it up into that blend line Again, down into the solid and then work our way up. There we go. And don't be tempted to overwork either. If you feel a blend is not quite working, I would usually say set it aside, let it dry and see what it looks like then. Because sometimes when blends dry, when inks dry or oxides dry, they actually look better and you might be surprised at how it looks then. Worst case, if you do a blend, a strip, a pan or whatever it may be, and you're really not happy with it, flick some water over it or some white paint or some gold paint or something and then see what you think. Because sometimes even that is enough to disguise what you think is little discrepancies on the blending and make it look lovely. OK, so the last colour, this is going to be a pop of kind of brighter colour. And we're going to go with Stormy Sky. So gorgeous love 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 this color and again stormy sky has got its own um, color combination video so you can go and see that in action as such and come back with my weathered wood and just blend those two together i'm just working on that blend line there and there we go so again that's one where I don't want to apply too much more ink. You can see where the ink's a little bit darker along here. I could probably work at that a bit more, but this is where I'm doing exactly as I said. I'm actually going to leave it and see what it looks like when it's dry because I know there's a patch of wet ink here and a patch of wet ink here. When that dries, it may well look perfectly blended, but overall, no, I can't do it. I can't leave it. <laughs> I need to work at it a bit more. Usually I tell myself, leave it, leave it, leave it today I'm not going to I'm just going to do a little more work on it so another layer of stormy sky and another layer of weathered wood it doesn't help the weathered wood is so pale okay this should be better that's better get that blended Make sure you don't start blending that colour down into here because that's where you end up with an almighty mess. So yeah, I think I'm happier with that now. I'm 
now I'm going to let it dry honestly <laughs> but much yeah much much better a little bit of paper there so we've got Victorian velvet going into tattered rose going into weathered wood and going into stormy sky so two combinations for you, you can see this is slowly starting to dry and that will continue to dry the aged mahogany and it will be nice and smooth as you see these colors but there's two color combinations using that victorian velvet let me know whether you, will you think this should sit within pinks or purples as well in the comments and don't forget to catch me very soon for the next color combination video which is going to be villainous potion you can see all of those here on the playlist and i'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel as well that would be fantastic take care everybody i'll see you again very soon